What up, nerds? It's uh, Band here for uh, CTF and Cigars and Chill, um, where normally I light up a cigar, talk about CTF and things, um, and any kind of security-related things that might come up. Uh, today, I don't have any uh, specific CTF-related things to go over. I'm just going to enjoy a cigar, talk about that a little bit. I do have a uh, project that I've started working on just, uh, just this week. In fact, really just got started on it last night, but I wanted to kind of showcase a proof of concept around that, so I'll get to that in a little bit. <clears throat> um, but yeah, just, just taking it easy today. Uh, just going to kind of chill out, and let's, uh, let's start off with the cigar for today. So today I've got, let's see if you can see that. This is a uh, Perdoma. It's a double-aged 12-year uh, Robusto Sun Grown. So this is a little bit of a fatter Robusto. So it's a it's a 56 gauge uh, Robusto. So it's uh, it's five inches long. Um, this this is a it's a pretty nice cigar. Let me let me see. I pulled up some statistics on this a little bit ago. Uh, let's see. So this is. We've got three blends of the uh, the tobacco leaf in here. So there is the uh, uh, the wrapper used as an Ecuadorian Connecticut shade. It's got a Nicaraguan sun grown and Nicaraguan Maduro. Um, so so those are the the three different types of leaves that are used to make this one. Um, so the binder would be Nicaraguan. The fillers Nicaraguan. Uh, but this this is one. It's it's been aged for twelve years. Uh, so so it's. Let's see, it spends, I think, 10 years. Um, I need to be better at taking notes. I apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> 10 years, it's aged, uh, bale, bale aged. So they, they take all the leaves, they, they put them in a bale uh, in a controlled environment for 10 years. And then this one, it's fermented in oak bourbon barrels for another two years. Uh, so, so that makes a, a you know an interesting... Uh, sort of bourbon flavor that's associated with this as well. It's got a real sweet smell to it. A little, you know, a little bit of spicy, but sort of a molasses smell to it. Um, and let's let's go ahead and cut this. So I uh, really haven't gotten into much as far as like well, how to smoke a cigar, how to light it, how to do all that sort of thing. So I just kind of wanted to touch on that as well. So first we're going to to cut the cigar. So the cigar comes with a cap on the end here so they've it's been wrapped and if you look really closely you can kind of see there's a leaf that surrounds it that it's been wrapped around and then they've got two little caps here you can see there's two lines for the cap at the top that ends up capping it or, or yeah just capping off the top so ideally when you cut it if you're going to use a straight cut so there's multiple ways to cut a cigar you've got your straight cutter which is which is what i've got here um, you can also do the V, which, which is similar, but it cuts it in a V-shaped, and then there's the punch. I usually just go for the, uh, the straight cigar because I'm, I'm pretty straightforward, simple kind of guy. Uh, but you can, if you look closely, you can see there, there are two lines for the, 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 uh, the cap, and ideally what you want to do is cut between those two lines. Uh, that way you've still got part of that cap there to um, hold it together so it doesn't start falling apart because that's, that's always terrible when you smoke a cigar and the, it starts unraveling on you, uh, but then you still get it cut open. So let me, let me cut this off keyboard so I don't get all over my keyboard. All right, so we've got a nice sort of straight cut there. Um, if, if you don't have a, a good cutter, you might end up with some debris. You don't wipe that away. And then we're going to light it. <coughs> so the, the way most people light them is with a butane lighter. So that's what I've got here. This is just a single flame butane lighter. I don't know if you can see the flame there, just kind of barely. Um, it's It burns clean, doesn't have any odor, so it doesn't really affect the lighting of the cigar. Um, if you light with a match, you get some of that odor. If you use a regular like cigarette lighter, uh, there's, there's also some taste associated with that. Uh, another common way that people like to light these are with um, pieces of cedar so so you can actually that you can get these at cigar shops or when you get cigars they often come with little bits of cedar and that's what those are for you can light the cedar and then light the cigar from that that also is, is pretty pleasant and then when you light it uh, 
the, the way I, I prefer to do it uh, is at first you do want to heat up the foot. So this is the, uh, the foot of the cigar. Just, just sort of light it and, and evenly heat it up. Just kind of run that around there. You want to heat it up um, because you, you definitely want to get an even light. And oh, I'm going to run out of butane today. <laughs> I've got some more inside. Um, yeah, so, so you want that nice and even. That way it burns evenly all the way through. Everything always fails in demos. I don't know if you've ever uh, noticed that. But everything works great until you go to demo it. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to refill this lighter today, but I think I can get this lit. So, all right, so we want to just kind of go around, burn through evenly. Uh, that way, if we start with a nice, even light at the tip of the cigar, then it's going to burn evenly all the way through. And this is a pretty thick one, so it's taking a minute. All right, so it's you can see there it's it's pretty evenly lit all the way around um so that that gets it started if you're not getting uh enough of a smoke then you can go ahead and light it while you you uh inhale a little bit but even then you want to move it around make sure that that flame's getting all the way through so this starts off nice and uh it's it's a nice and smooth it does is a little sweet also a bit of a, a woody flavor to it. Um, but then, yeah, so that's, this is the Perdoma 12 year. Um, yeah, it's got that molasses flavor, woody, uh, a, a little bit, a uh, little peppery. It's not too peppery. This is a pretty medium bodied cigar. Um, it's not too strong, not too bold. And uh, yeah, when you retrohale, so though uh, with a cigar, uh, if, if you don't know, which hopefully you you do, uh, you never want to actually inhale it into your lungs. That's it's too strong. You'll get you'll make yourself sick. So don't do that. Uh, but one of the things you can do to enhance the flavor, um, <clears throat> just you breathe in a little bit and then exhale it through through your nostrils. Not a lot, just a little bit. You can really get the the woody flavor from this when you do the retrohale or you're exhaling through your nostrils. Yeah, definitely, um, definitely, definitely woody there. <laughs> okay, now to pair with this today, I'm going to pull up a bottle of scotch. So I've got this, uh, it's Ardbeg Corivecran. <clears throat> so let's, let's try some of this. Smells good. So the the Corvecran. So the uh, Ardbeg. It's an Islay Scotch. So it's from the Islay region of Scotland. Um, and the Corvecran refers to the uh, uh, where this particular where the water comes from. So Ardbeg. They named their different uh, scotches from based on the water source. So Ugadal is another one that I'm a pretty good fan of. I think I'm just about out of this. Maybe finishing this bottle off today. There we go. It's a nice, beautiful color. It's uh, you know, amber, golden. It's pretty. It's pretty clear. So the uh, the Cory Vecran. <clears throat> and okay, I had a description of this pulled up too, and I closed it. It smells it smells sweet a little bit of apple actually I've never gotten that before from that so that's 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 uh, surprising so the Cory Vecran it's actually comes from a world a whirlpool um, off the coast of Scotland <clears throat> that's that's what this one is is named for um, the Ugadal I think Ugadal is a uh, it's basically a marsh uh, near where Ardbeg is is um, uh, where, where their office is, where they make their, their wonderful scotches. <coughs> so yeah, the, the Whirlpool lies to the north of Islay. Um, and yeah, so like, let's see, they, I'm reading from Ardbeg's website themselves. They say that it's, uh, 
to the north of Islay, where only the bravest souls dare to venture. Swirling aromas and torrents of deep, peaty, peppery taste lurk beneath the surface. Beautifully balanced dram. Uh, like the whirlpool itself, Cory Beckwood is not for the faint of heart. So Ardbeg is, is uh, and like most Islay scotches, it's going to be very peaty. It's very strong um, scotch. And I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of water to this. So don't want to water it down too much. I'm just going to get a, like a little cap full of water, add that to that. That'll open it up, kind of free up some of the aromas. Um, yeah, that's good. Get a good swirl it around, get a good whiff of that before you have a taste. <coughs> so, uh, and again, I'm, I'm reading directly from Ardbeg's website here. Because they describe it better than I can. So they describe the aroma as heady, intense, and powerful. Um, terry ropes, uh, linseed oil, uh, collision of waxy dark chocolate, warm black currants, and muscovado sugar pulls you uh, under its spell with a burst of plump cherries and earthy pine needles leaping from its depth. Yeah, so that's some of that sweetness that I'm getting. With a little bit of uh, salty seasoning, a little briny, some seaweed. And they're saying smoky bacon. I'm not sure I smell that, but maybe a little bit of that. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm inhaling a little bit too much of that. All right, so let's let's go and have a taste. So that's that's good. It's a little bit a little bit lighter and sweeter than the the Ugadol, which which is the one that I usually get. The Corvette is is a little bit uh, a little bit more pricey than the Ugadol. Not not a lot more. Um, you should be able to pick it up for around a hundred dollars or less for a bottle. So this is a little little uh, more peppery. Um, on our bag site, they actually describe it as chewy, so I can see that. Uh, definitely bombards the tongue with flavors. There's the the, the peppery, um, let's see, peppery steak, seaweed. There's there's definitely some uh, some of that sea flavor to it. A little bit briny, um, coffee. Um, and, you know, dark fruits like blueberries, cherries, black currants, uh, a little bit of bitter almonds. So it's, it's a very, uh, very uh, complex scotch. And that's, that's, that's why I, I, I like scotches. They're, they're not a simple, a simple flavor to describe. They're, they're always complex uh, and, and pleasant. They they're, um, can be a little bit harsh, uh, but once, once you kind of, if, if you're new to drinking scotches, that's, they kind of turn people off to them, you know, um, if you remember that that scene in uh, Community where um, uh, yeah I'm I'm uh, drawing blanks here on names but she had a drink of scotch and she said it tastes like bog uh, that, that's fairly accurate you know uh, in a lot of cases they're actually do are originally made from bogs uh, but yeah it's actually it a pleasant experience so and and it's complex. So you've got that initial flavor, and then you've got a finish, which is long and deep. Um, you get more above that black coffee, a little bit more pepper, chocolate coated cherries. Um, it's a little spicy, so like some kind of like hot pepper spice uh, or pepper sauce. Uh, so that's good. So we'll have a bit of that, and we'll have our cigar. just enjoy life all right if anybody is actually on and you want to chat about anything let me know um, but the other thing I wanted to talk about today so I guess I guess a couple of announcements first of all uh, any of you out there who are MSPs or work for an MSP uh, next week is IT nation secure and uh, if you were with me last week, I had Ross, who's one of my coworkers, on with me, and he's been putting together a CTF for IT Nation Secure. So, so that's coming up on Wednesday, uh, the fourteenth. So, if if you're 
watching this archive. That would be October 14th, 2020. And uh, the, the CFTF that's coming up, this is one that's specifically designed for, for noobs. Um, it's not really for people who have a lot of experience with CTFs. Uh, in fact, there's really not a lot of hacking. This is really going to be more of a Jeopardy style focused on forensics. And specifically, since we work for uh, Perch Security, it's highlighting our product, Perch Ivana. So if you want to participate, if you're interested in what Perch does, or if you're a Perch customer, this is a good opportunity, a good learning opportunity to learn about Perch and what Perch does, because you're going to be using Perch Ibana to do some forensics investigation into a, uh, a compromised host or a compromised network. And I spent too much time talking. Let my cigar go out. That's a horrible sin. I should never do that. I have to just give it a little bit of a boost here. Get the heart going again. So that's IT Nation Secure. Uh, Google it. Look it up. It's not very expensive. Um, we're happy to have people participate. Learn about Perch during the CTF, how to use that. Uh, should be some fun. It's going to be pretty short. It's going to be pretty simple, uh, but it should still be entertaining and fun to participate in. I've also been hinting at a CTF that I'm going to be putting together, uh, BAM CTF, in a couple months. Uh, I, I still don't have the details on that. I'm, I'm going to be working on that. <clears throat> so hopefully, maybe by next week, I'll get some of the information together and we, we can talk about that a little bit. Also next week, uh, Jason from CNWR is going to be here and we're going to be doing some crack me's and I'm going to have those crack me's on my site. Uh, hopefully I get those up later today so you guys can have a crack at those before we get started. So let me let me just go ahead and show you my the site that I've set up. So this is bamctf.com. So I've given you a command line interface to interact with it. If you don't want to bother with that, you can always use the menu here on the side. There's not much here at the moment, mainly it's just links to other things. But let's list the uh, contents of the site just with ls. If you don't want to wait for the uh, typing animation, you just double click on the screen. <clears throat> All right, so we got the welcome message about, we've got a link to my Twitter account. There's the Twitch link, which if you're watching me right now, you're already aware of. Link to YouTube, so Twitch only keeps videos archived for uh, 14 to 60 days, depending on what level uh, your account is. So I've been uploading videos after the fact to YouTube as well. Uh, so you can go there to, to see anything that you might have missed. Uh, and then we've got my, my GitHub account, which uh, it's specifically the BAM CTF GitHub. So anything that I'm using as tutorials, um, any crack needs or challenges that uh, we're going to be talking about or discussing in future episodes. I'm going to be putting those on GitHub so you can access those there. Also got the B-Sides Houston 2020. Um, so that would be the files that we went over last week with Ross. All, all those challenges, you can access those. And then a couple weeks ago I did a uh, video tutorial on how to analyze zero login alerts for a security analyst. And somebody had asked about the PCAPs that I'd used during that analysis, so I provided those as well. So if you want to access those, we can just use the cat command. And yes, I do have tab completion enabled, so we can just tab complete, look for the zero login, and that's just going to take you to that specific section on my GitHub page where you can access those PCAPs. And I do apologize, since I am smoking a cigar, I'm doing these outside, which isn't ideal for audio purposes. So there will be some background noises. There's some sort of event going on nearby, a lot of kids screaming and, and loud noises, and then a truck just drove by. So that, that's going to happen. It is what it is. Um, so that's BAM CTF. Now, what is this, this new project I mentioned? So uh, if, you, if you follow me on Twitter, and again, the link to my Twitter is there on the uh, the BAM CTF site. 
just cat twitter.txt and that will take you there. <clears throat> I mentioned that I'm, I'm working on a video game. Now this is a CTF video game. Uh, it's along the lines of um, Pony Island, um, or there's another game that was called, I think it was just called Maze. <coughs> so it's a game that's designed to be hacked. And my intention is sometime next year, I'm hoping to get it all complete mid-2021. And we're actually going to have a CTF that is designed around this game. So this is going to be a, a 2D platformer game that you will not be able to do anything with without actually hacking the game. So I have put together a proof of concept. Now this isn't, I'm pretty sure the final version isn't going to look anything like this because this is what I threw together after just with a couple of hours of playing around with uh, Godot last night. Um, I never actually had used Godot and haven't really done any game development before. So this is definitely just a proof of concept and nothing more. Oh, hold on. Went to the wrong screen there. There we go. Okay, so this is this is the proof of concept. Once again, I haven't done any work on the art. I haven't done any any. Well, I've got several ideas on what I want to do. This this is just the basics, just to show you what what I'm talking about. So we've got our character here, which is the uh, the BAM CTF logo, and we want to get to a flag. And, and now that I'm looking at it now, I realize that that's probably a little dark and hard to see. So again, we'll, we'll I'll work on the art. A lot of things to do. Essentially, this is this would be level one of the game. Uh, it's going to be multiple levels. It's just a basic 2D platformer, and to complete this level, you just have to move your character from the left to the flag. However, as I try to move, nothing is happening. Like I said, you will not be able to complete this game without hacking it. So let's, I'm going to really quick pull up Godot, and let's take a look at the code. The reason why nothing's happening is I have this constant called walk speed, which determines how fast the... Uh, the character sprite can move and it's currently set to zero. So if you want to complete this game, you've got to figure out how to increase that value. <clears throat> now I'm not going to show you how I found this. Don't want to give away too much because like I said, we will eventually do this as a CTF. Plus I kind of cheated a little bit when I, uh, when I made this, it's just for the proof of concept demo. <clears throat> but I did a little bit of debugging and I found where that value was set. So right here I'm using uh, Cheat Engine, uh, Cheat Engine 7.1. You can download that at CheatEngine.org. And manage to find the location where that walk speed is set. So this is the address memory where it's located. It's a double and currently the value is zero. So I'm going to raise that to 100. Now let's go back to the game and look, I can move. I'm not moving that fast, but I can move. Let's uh, let's go ahead and increase that even more. Let's let's go really fast. There we go, 500. So you can see the speeds increased quite a bit. And then I get to the end, and I got the flag and level complete. <coughs> so that's that's the basic uh, proof of concept I've put together. Just so you can you can see what I'm talking about, uh, going to definitely add more levels, more complexity. Uh, like I said, I I started on this proof of concept last night, uh, like ten o'clock. I spent a couple hours putting it together. Uh, Godot's pretty simple to use. It was it it I spent maybe the day before kind of learning a little bit about Godot before I put this together. Um, so that's that's how we'll start. The first level will be similar, where you just have to move across the screen. you got to find that walk value and modify it. Uh, later levels will add additional things, like there'll be a timer. The timer starts off with, you know, one second on the clock, and you've got to complete the level in that amount of time. <coughs> we'll add additional things like, you know, walls in the way that you have to teleport through, um, holes you have to jump over that are too far to jump over, uh, bosses that are invincible, uh, and you only have one hit point. So, so those, those types of things 
Now the way, I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, the wrapper off of my cigar. This is a pretty good size wrapper. Um, what I recommend with the wrapper, you light the cigar with the wrapper on and then let it heat up a bit before you take it off so it kind of loosens up some of the glue for the wrapper. The, the, that has happened to me and uh, something you're going to watch out for. If you just take the wrapper off from the beginning, it might be, depending on how sloppily they glued it on, it could actually stick to the cigar and you could end up sort of tearing up your cigar and then having it unravel on you. That's just never a pleasant experience, having your cigar unravel on you while you're smoking it. So let it heat up a little bit before you take that wrapper off. All right, so back to, to the game. I'm calling it uh, Hack or Die. <coughs> um, uh, like I said, I've just started on it. Gonna going to definitely be working on it for a while. Um, at, like I said, hopefully mid 2021 we'll have at least version one out and we'll, we'll do a ctf around that so the the idea is that the the ctf isn't just completing the game but i want you to actually write a uh, a a cheat bot that completes the game for you and then what i want you to do is submit your your bots submit your code and then i will run it and whoever can complete the game with their code the quickest will uh, will be the winner. So this isn't going to be a short CTF. It's not just going to be a few hours long. This is something that when, when it comes time, I will I'll let you guys know. I'll release it and then give you a few weeks to uh, to work on it and do some debugging. And we'll then I'll start taking in uh, people's scripts and running through them in order to determine who's able to to hack their way and get all the way through the game. Um, and complete it in the shortest amount of time. Now, of course, you could always just hack the game and set the win, you know, set the win value to true. Uh, but I, but my intent is to actually, uh, at least for the top five to ten uh, people who complete it in the shortest amount of time, I'll have to build some automation around that. So I've got a lot of work ahead of me. Um, actually, walk, lo watch it and make sure you're actually going through all the levels and completing all of the challenges. Um, so, so there will be some verification that I'll do on my end to, to make sure you don't simply just start at the game and then jump to the ending. You will actually have to go through level by level, complete each task, and I'll, I'll work on adding checkpoints and those kinds of things to make sure you get through them the whole way through. So that's, that's the challenge that is coming up. Expect it mid-2021, BAM CTFs, Hack or Die. Uh, I've, I've got some, some high hopes for this. I've got a lot of things that I plan on doing. Um, you know, the higher levels are going to include some, you know, anti-cheat technology to make it even more difficult. And, I, you know, I hope to actually put a little bit of thought and development into the, the, the game development itself. Uh, make it, you know, kind of a fun game to play. Not, not just a hacking challenge, but, you know, something that's kind of fun to get through. So hopefully... Uh, Hopefully that all works out and um, you guys find that interesting. <clears throat> so I think that's really all I have to talk about today. Like I said, this is a sort of a, a short episode. Um, yeah, we got GNO 5 Wi-Fi T3M. What up? Thanks. I uh, appreciate the feedback. Says He says it's looking awesome. So I appreciate that. Um, if, if you think this looks too simple and dumb, just keep in mind, I, I like I said, I, I've spent all of maybe two to four hours putting that proof of concept together. So it's there, there's a lot more to come. So that's, uh, that's what I'm doing. That's what's up in the uh, BAM CTF world. And, yeah, I think that's about it. I'm going to keep enjoying this cigar. Uh, that's it's definitely nice. It's def it's got a it does have a pretty pretty strong woody flavor. You do so um, pairing it with the scotch that might be overpowering some of the other taste. I, I imagine um, it is aged in a bourbon barrel, so there is a bit of a, a whiskey flavor to that. Uh, but I've also got this really strong peaty scotch over here, so that's uh, definitely affecting my palate. But it seems to pair pretty well together. 
Uh, normally, I'd recommend if you're smoking a, a bold cigar, like a strong cigar, you want a uh, weaker drink or a, a you know more smooth, mild drink. If you're drinking something strong, then you want a more mild cigar. This is sort of a medium cig body cigar, um, you know, medium boldness. So it's it, it still it still pairs pretty well. Enjoyable experience. So all's going good here in Bam World. Well, I think that's all I've got for you guys today. The main thing I really just wanted to talk about the uh, hacker die and show off the uh, proof of concept and what we're going to be doing with that. So don't forget, check in next week also at 10 a.m. Central Time um, at CTF and Cigars on Twitch. Uh, don't forget to check out my Twitter where I you know, talk about what's coming up and any updates that I have. And that's just BAM, it's B-A-M-C-T-F on, on, uh, on Twitter. And then, you know, BAMCTF.com where you can access any of the code and things. Oh, and I will be, later today, I will be posting some Crack Me's. So there will be a new section on the BAMCTF site for Crack Me's. Uh, there are, I think, five from previous CTFs that I'd done earlier this year that um, I'm going to be posting. And all of those were one. So Jason from CNWR, who's going to be joining me next week, uh, he was he participated in those previous CTFs, and, and he was one of the few that actually was able to uh, crack all of the crack bees. So he's agreed to come on, and he's going to be uh, kind of walking through his thought process and how he got through those. So, But I will give you guys a chance to take a crack at them before, uh, before we actually go through them. So, yeah, you'll have those today, and then next Saturday... We're going to be doing a walkthrough. So if you get stuck and you're not sure where to go, we'll, we'll give you that walkthrough. Uh, so thanks again, and I will uh, see you guys next week. And, and don't forget, uh, if you ever get stuck, um, try harder, don't panic, and always RTFM. So thanks a bunch, guys. I will see you next week. <laughs>